Alright guys, how's it going? I'm just going to do an update video on my last two videos. Obviously these have been a major talking point of the past week. That's my hardware debunked part 1 and part 2. I'm going to concentrate on part 1 right now because I feel this is the one that is actually most important. Because in this video I pointed out one or two inconsistencies in Steve's benchmarks. And here's the thing about analysis. You have to look at the big picture. You take every single thing into account before you reach your conclusion. And you take the conclusion that makes most logical sense. In this part 1 video, I gave Steve the benefit of the doubt where I used words like mistake and inconsistencies. But in part 2 of my video, I had moved on to calling it manipulation. There is a very fine line between a mistake and manipulation in terms of analysis. And it basically comes down to just how many mistakes can a person make before you say, I'm sorry, this is now deliberate. Well, over the course of analysing Steve's Sandy Bridge vs FX video, I had basically crossed over that line. For me, there were too many mistakes for it to be a mistake. It had become manipulation. Steve and I do discuss these things quite a lot. We do actually talk quite a lot on Twitter, and we're mostly disagreeing about stuff. But in the end, the facts are what's important here. And what Steve did was he brought a fact to me that had up until that point escaped my attention. Those of you who follow Hardware Unboxed know that Steve is absolutely prolific. He throws out benchmarks like a machine basically. There is nobody else in the press even close to Steve's work rate when it comes to throwing out benchmarks. Unfortunately, that means that not even I am going to catch them all. And in this case, I have missed one. And a pretty important one, as you will now see. Now, if you remember about the Gears of War benchmark, in the example I used, the KB Lake example, FX was one frame ahead of the 2500K. That was back in January. And for the 1800X review in March, the 2nd of March, we can still see here that FX is ahead. There weren't so many tests during the Ryzen review though. Only 4 games tested. The fact is, CPU reviews require more than just game testing. But in Steve's 1800X review, he's still benchmarking 1080p Ultra. And we see FX winning by 1 frame. And we know what happened in his later test. Steve had dropped the quality down to high quality. The 2500K now thrashes FX. And it was just another piece in the puzzle which made me believe that we were looking at a manipulation of the results. But then Steve showed me his in-depth look at Ryzen's gaming performance. No longer just a handful of games, 16 games played at 1080p and 1440p. Now there's no video of this, it's just an article over at TechSpot. But the important thing here was, if you look at the date, March the 6th, 2017, and if we go to Gears of War over the page, we can see that Steve has already moved to high quality. There's no 2500k in here, but that doesn't really matter, because Steve has moved to a high quality benchmark only 4 days after his 1800x review, and this basically proves that the switch to high quality had nothing to do with his 2500k versus FX video. Because Steve would not have been planning this video the same day that I released the tech press loses the plot. Remember his video on that was a response to my tech press loses the plot. There's no way he could do this on the same day. And it's highly likely that this article existed before my video did. Because Steve's in Australia. And obviously he's around 10 hours ahead of me. And that is what I mean by a fine line because Obviously this was a major factor in my belief that Steve had manipulated the benchmark. But after showing me this, I am forced to reevaluate. And on Twitter, Steve has given me an awful lot more information, which I have had to take into account. So I'm going to tell you what he told me, and then let you decide for yourself. Right, so one of the first things he mentioned was, note that if he had wanted to manipulate the data, he would just have dropped Mafia 3. He had tested so many games that no one would complain if there were 15 games rather than 16. And we can see in the video that FX did in fact win by around about 10%. I've seen this argument quite a few times though, and it doesn't really wash with me. Because if you were manipulating benchmarks and were smart about it, you would throw in one or two as protection so that you could say, hey look, if I were truly manipulating the benchmarks, I would have removed this one. The fact is that over so many benchmarks, this 10% win for FX doesn't really make any difference to the overall score. It still gets thrashed in the end, even with this win. So I would never take anything like that in isolation as being proof. But of course, if there is other evidence on top of that, then at that point, yes, you should consider that Steve has tested Mafia 3 as well as other things. 
which was a good result for FX. Next up was Watch Dogs. This one looked really quite strange to me because as we saw in the original, FX actually won by six frames, only to get beaten by 11 frames a couple of months later. Steve reckons this was because Watch Dogs received better optimization for Intel CPUs a month or two after release, most notably for Intel's quad-core CPUs, and he says when he gets time, he'll do further testing. I'm not entirely convinced that optimization can make the difference between 41 and 58 frames. It maybe looks like it lines up the way it should, however looking at other sources, for example Gamers Nexus and Game GPU, we can see the FX does beat the 2500K. There is an issue here because optimizations do happen and Steve is doing an awful lot of testing. So regarding Watch Dogs 2, this one is up in the air for me we simply don't know. Now Steve goes on to then talk about making it clear what memory was used for the testing. No disagreement there. And I of course pointed out that the different memory speeds was the main reason why there was such a gap between hardware unbox testing and computer bases. Steve here is just pointing out that he didn't try to hide the fact that he used faster memory. He used the maximum memory speeds on both CPUs. So that's fair enough. Now moving on to the biggest problem which for me was Deus Ex. And Steve says Deus Ex was a bad choice as it turns out. He didn't realise at the time and that can happen when you test well over a dozen games. It was also a crazy period during the Ryzen release. He did also add the disclaimer in the video remember where he mentioned that DX12 was a poor choice. And this is an interesting point here because as more and more mistakes mount up, it's like I said, you start believing it's not really a mistake. But as you get more information, for example like what I just talked about with Gears of War. And then you take into consideration that Steve did actually mention in that 2500k video that there was a DX12 problem with Ryzen as well. Then you start to think, okay, let's take this at face value. Steve saying it was a bad choice and he didn't realise that at the time. For me today, this is now far more believable than it was a couple of days ago. But for those of you who are wondering, is this just a bunch of excuses and stuff like what you saw from PC perspective without any real attempt at an apology or even taking the slightest bit of responsibility for their actions. Steve now says he agrees that the initial videos were handed badly by both of us, but he takes responsibility for how that one played out. In other words, after I launched my Tech Press Loses the Plot video, Steve has realised that the 2500k video right afterwards probably wasn't the best idea. And he knows that I'm annoyed by this because I took a lot of stick over that. More telling was this, looking back, I can see how I was disrespectful towards you and I should have toned down the conspiracy shit or rather not gone there at all. I was not expecting this from Steve, but I was very glad to see it. And he then ended by saying, he does think it was unfair for me to try and trash his credibility, but he also understands why I went that way. The last thing he says was, he thinks this is beneath both of us and makes us both look bad, so I agree we need to stop doing it. To which I responded, mate, I honestly did not set out to trash your credibility. I tried to avoid that. It's just that everything I had seen up until that point in the 2500k video made it look manipulated. I just couldn't believe that he would make so many errors in one video, but I get that he was under an awful lot of pressure. He then said that he's happy to drop it all together, which is something he told me before he even saw the video. However, I was sure that Steve would respond to these videos and was quite surprised again when he reiterated that he was happy to drop it all together and he still wasn't going to do a follow up video. Now that was actually two days ago and yesterday I woke up to this on Twitter as Steve has obviously been reflecting more upon it and the first thing he said again was yeah looking at this fairly as I can I think the DSX DX12 testing was a blunder on his behalf. Arma 3 and GTA 5 aren't great choices for what he was trying to accomplish but he had the data so he carried it over. Now remember I had stated that using Arma 3 and Grand Theft Auto 5 in a benchmark that's supposed to show how Bulldozer closed the gap in modern titles that didn't really make sense to me. Now he continued with saying that the memory thing was an unfortunate oversight to be honest. He just thought that giving FX 2400 memory and the Sandy CPU 2133 was very fair. I've got absolutely no problem with Steve benchmarking at maximum memory speeds. I simply pointed out that this was the main reason why the results are so much different. And what I said to Steve was one of the biggest issues I was having was how I felt that he was dismissing computer bases results. But I'll get to that point in a minute. As he continued, I should have given you more credit on the Tomb Raider thing. Turns out you were spot on with that 
that one. And while I changed some testing methods going forward, I didn't credit you. On the other thing, the Con Lake thing, Steve says that the i584 thing has been proven now, but I was somewhat right about the 8700 and that's something to keep an eye on going forward. I'm happy to go along with this now. I've been taking a closer look at some other data and it's not only Steve whose i584 performs fine at 65 watts. There are various other reviewers out there who have i584 hundreds which can hold 3.8 gigahertz under 65 watts. There was another interesting source on the 8700 recently though. Over at Anantech, Intel Core B processors 8th gen BGA with 65 watts TDP and a very interesting test down here on the MSI Vortex G25 system. Nice looking little box this one. A small but mighty gaming tower. So that's an article over at Anantech on April the 12th. Now I missed this because I was knees deep in those hardware debunked videos. But as it stands, Anantech tested this machine, various thread loads, at their default and with a 65 watt power limit. And as we can see, depending on how many threads are loaded, no surprise the turbo tends to drop. If you limit to 65 watts, as soon as it hits 10 threads, or 12 threads, the CPU is limited at 3.2 GHz, which is the base clock of this i7-8700. But that's just a little aside there. I'm happy to give up on the i5-8400, Steve appears happy to give up on the 8700. But the final thing he said yesterday morning was, the cherry pick samples he's not really fighting me on. I'm probably right, but he wanted to see what the average retail CPU does under the same test conditions used by reviewers. He just doesn't see it as a big deal in this instance. But he gets that it could be a big deal in the future if retail chips are noticeably slower. You see, I am always thinking like this. This is what it's all about for me, because if we let Intel away with it now, they will for sure try to get away with even more the next time. We see this with Nvidia, seems like month after month. The more they get away with, the more they try. We need to stop these things as they happen so that we don't get worse a year or two later. This is why I react instantly rather than wait until it's too late. But getting back to that point about computer base and where I thought Steve was sort of dismissing computer base's results, this actually made me uncover another piece of important information when looking at Steve's benchmarks of F1 2016. Back in the 3rd of January, Steve has benchmarked F1 2016 in heavy rain, 1080p ultra quality. And we see the 2500K scoring 105 frames per second compared to the FX's 76. That was a massive win of 38% for the i5 2500K. Yet two months later, the same benchmark and the gap has closed, down from 38% to 27%. Now I didn't even notice this in my own video, so I'm not entirely sure what's happened there, but the i5-2500K's result is way down on what it was a couple of months previous. And the only reason I noticed this at all was that at the end of this 2500K video, Steve actually mentions that he has no idea how Computer Base got the numbers that they got in F1 2016. He had no idea how the i5-2500K's numbers were so low. But if you actually look at Computer Base's numbers, F1 2016 at 1080p, we can see their i5-2500K scores 85.5 FPS, which is the same as what Steve got. In actual fact, it's the FX results that are lower over at Computer Base. The FX only scores 61 there, whereas it scores 67 over at Hardware Unboxed. So in other words, Computer Base's results are actually better for Sandy Bridge than what Steve's are. And it was at this point that I basically realised I should have stuck with what I said at the end of this section of the first video when I said this has just been an awful benchmark Steve and I am sure that you will admit it. Well basically speaking this is pretty much what Steve has done. He has admitted that blunders with DSX Arma 3 GTA 5 shouldn't even have been in there. He didn't even realise that his own F1 2016 benchmark was actually worse for Sandy Bridge than computer bases. But on top of that is the most important one, the one I started with, Gears of War 4, where we can clearly see that Steve's testing had changed before the 2500k video was even under consideration. Again, that thing I said about the fine line between a mistake and manipulation, that line has now crossed back over firmly into the bunch of mistakes camp. Like I said in the original video, an awful lot comes down to the memory speeds. Steve is very much catering towards the enthusiast. This is always going to happen, right? Because it goes back to what I said about creating that gap, creating entertaining benchmarks. With Gears of War 4, Steve wasn't looking to make the 2500k better. He was trying to create a gap at the top of the CPU list because Steve is always aware that when things close up, the benchmark becomes very uninteresting. That is why he has dropped from ultra quality in Gears of War down to very high. It's just his timing was absolutely 
awful. And we've talked about this, and he has definitely taken this on board. It is not a good idea to change your benchmarks a couple of days after you review a major CPU or GPU. That is not a good idea. Even when your intentions are honest, it's going to look dishonest. And that is what has happened here. The last thing I'm going to talk about is Assassin's Creed Origins. Steve appears to feel quite strongly about this one. And I'm actually going to give him this one, I think. Because he feels that his results were very similar to game GPU's results. And they actually were. Because they've benchmarked the same sequence. Looking at computer based results in this case, some of them do look a little bit suspect. For example, the 7600K and the 1500X results. Looking back, he doesn't think he's done a bad job there. I am willing to say, probably computer base has messed up here somewhere. But more testing on this game needs to be done. Right, so to finish this one up, some of you probably believe that I actually enjoy all this drama, but let me assure you, I do not enjoy this. It would be different if my heart was in it, and to be honest with you, my heart was not really in having a go at Steve, because it's like I said at the end of video 2, Steve is one of the good guys. And if you are in any doubt before this video, then I hope you no longer are. Also at the end of this part 2, I had a real go at the fanboys and I made it clear, do not go over to Steve, do not give him stick over this video. And some of you got a little bit too defensive. But let me just clarify another point about what I mean by fanboys. Like this guy here, Vanguardis Vukava, who says, I told TV basically proof how much of an idiot you are in testing. How can you even go and do this when I explicitly told you not to do it? What's this one? This is why I have the highest of respect for you, Jim. You don't have respect for me if you go and do what I tell you not to do instantly after I tell you not what to do. I'm not putting up with this shit on my channel. You're now banned from the channel. Here's another one. These ones really irritate me. No response to it. Adored, eh? LOL. At least man up, admit you're wrong and apologise. Steve told me he would not respond to this and he hasn't responded to it. I know he must be burning to respond to these because of the stuff that I have pointed out in it. And every minute this video was delayed, Steve had to suffer more and more attacks from idiots. Like this guy, Jules Verne's. You're a dickhead. Maybe listen a bit more to Adored TV. Jules, you're the one that should have listened more to me. You're another one that's gone on the ban list. And having a go at Linus as well. Here is another thing. Having a go at these guys on my own channel is not acceptable either. Every time Joker comes along, a bunch of you have a go at him. Just shows how clueless you are because Joker's pretty pro AMD and yet you can't even see it. You guys are just doing my head in. Goodbye. And any of the rest of you guys in the press have any problems with idiots like this, just drop me a line and I will delete them from my own channel. I do not want them here either. So to summarise this one, these videos existed because Steve was very harsh on me and he knows it and he's admitted it, but he has manned up about all of that. I was wrong to go down the manipulation line, but that is a problem with analysis. That's what it looked like to me. I'm pretty sure that's what it looked like to all of you when it was spelled out and Steve knows himself it looks really bad. But now that you look at it with fresh information, for me it is now safe to say that Steve's just had an off day, a really bad off day, but there wasn't any attempt to deceive there. Oh yeah, I forgot about another one, Joe Blow. Never seen you on the channel before now, Joe. And I won't be seeing you again. So let me just finish this one by apologising to Steve for going down that road. Even though it looked like it, I need to make triple sure. And I would not have gone down that route had I seen that Gears of War benchmark on the 6th of March. That was a bad error on my part. But we're done with this. We are completely done with this. We're not going near Con Lake or anything else. Because to be frank, we've both got better things to do. Well, Steve's got better things to do. He's been reviewing Ryzen all week. Whereas I haven't been. I'll be taking a look at the review of reviews though, including Steve's no doubt, and I'll get that video to you as soon as I possibly can. In the meantime, you'll enjoy all of those reviews today, same as I will. I don't think you'll see any great surprises, but from what I hear, it's a pretty decent CPU. A little bit better than what I was expecting, and that's always good to see. Until then, as always, check the video links, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you later guys.